Hello, everybody. My name is Ned Dennison. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. And uh, today we're going to be talking to uh, one of our honorees, uh, Amy Lomelin, and also Rafa from uh, Cancun. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to put it into context. We had our induction and award ceremonies in Cancun this year. Rafa was our host with his team that did an excellent job. Um, it, during the event, there were three races. Um, two of them relatively short, and on the Sunday morning, after a few drinks at our ceremony, there was a 10K race. Uh, what made it interesting and different for me was there was there were 1,000 swimmers. Not 100, this is 1,000, so Roman numeral M. I've never seen 1,000 <laughs> swimmers in a marathon race before. Uh, so it was really quite interesting, and that's uh, the purpose of today is to is to help understand that. Amy, why don't you start with your involvement both as a swimmer and an ambassador, just to give your perspective first? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank thank you, Ned. Uh, well, I I swam this race uh, several times. In fact, the first time I swam it, uh, the the name was different. It was not called the Cruce, uh, if I recall right, and help me a little bit, uh, Rafa. It was, yeah. called, uh, it was called Por la Libre. Por la Libre. Por la Libre. Exactly. And yes. <laughs> it was 2006. Uh, I remember we were about 250 swimmers. Uh, uh, it, it was a big race at the time, but but no, nothing compared to what it is today. Um, uh, great great experience. In fact, I remember I I won that time the first place absolute. But then I, I I came back and I saw the the, the, the race and the organization just uh, how it, it grew significantly uh, up until these days uh, like you said it's over a thousand swimmers it, it is incredible and 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 I think one of the the, the best things that the organizers have done is that uh, it is an international race uh, you got people from all over the place. Uh, uh, I guess if if I'm correct, there are like over 20 uh, different countries represented at the swim, uh, which is something uh, I would say very few swims have in uh, in the world. So so you know we're we're proud to have it in Mexico in Cancun, and um, there is no doubt that the swim has really helped uh, tourism uh, in in the site whenever they have a cruise. So, so, you know, as a Rafa, swimmer, as a Mexican, I'm glad to, 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 to have witnessed all that. Rafa, start and tell us a little bit about this 2024 swim, the, the three races, the numbers in each race, um, the number of boats, volunteers, no wetsuits, everybody with a bubble. T just help us understand the, the overall picture. Yes, thank you so much once again. And of course, thank you, Jaime, for being here. Uh, this is amazing because we've been growing a lot with this event. This event actually is like a, another day in the office, you know, somehow, because, you know, in the weather, you, you have no ex expectation what's going to happen, you know, in a way that you, you're preparing everything for, as you said. But you said that thousand swimmers. For one piece of the of the of the event, as you know, we have three parts, and we had one thousand one hundred no one thousand seven hundred in this year. So it's it's huge. We have two days, and the ten k is exactly as you said is is exactly a thousand swimmers. Exact number nine hundred and ninety eight swimmers this year. We had it was it was huge. It was amazing. But uh, as you know, and as you notice, uh, you have to be prepared. Um, this event, as you know, is from one island to another island, this point to point. But uh, you have uh, many things that can change. The weather is the main factor here. And um, as you saw, the logistics, uh, the operation, everything is, is a lot going on. We have, as, I, as you mentioned, 1.9K, we have 320 swimmers. 3.8, we have 486 swimmers, and 10K, we have like a thousand swimmers. So it's a big event. That's why we have to we have to ha have two days for this. 
and now uh, the logistics goes like so extreme from one day to another day because as you know well in this case we didn't have that idea but uh, at the beginning as the main race you have to end up on the other side of uh, another island and imagine in this case that we have to bring everything back to Cancun because we had this curse um uh, modifications you know so uh it's a, it's a huge event is it, we have a very good results and uh we've been growing with the great ambassadors as time in these years and some of some of uh new ones coming next year so rafa you you said no wetsuits allowed because the water is warm yes everybody exactly. must everyone must wear a bubble for visibility yes exactly uh that's really important because the weather heat is 27 um, Celsius, you know, degrees Celsius. It's really, really hot, as you know. And uh, wetsuits is just increase this problem sometimes for some swimmers, as you know. Um, uh, maybe some people that come from Argentina, from the South, they, they haven't experienced this kind of weather, you know. They haven't experienced this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, temperatures. So uh, as you, you know that, uh, of course. As and when you jump into these wa waters, are really a beautiful, but are extreme for you guys. So we try to explain that you need to have a bubble first. We we call it the tall bowie because we need visibility for a thousand swimmers. Imagine that we have about uh, fifty uh, boats, and they cannot just uh, the other way. The only way that we can just prevent to um be aware of all the swimmers because of that visibility. First, the caps they have to be like yellow, or they have to be green, or they have to be um the 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 hard the pink ones, of course. And this visibility visibility comes also with the toe bow, which has to be either yellow or or the the pink one. And it's important also because in Cancun or Quintana Roo, this part of Mexico, is mandatory to have it. It's so mandatory. In fact, we need that certification, and for that we need the 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 bowies, and we need to have those those caps. We need some um, quantities of of uh, boats that cover this amount of participation. So yes, it's kind of a of a lot to work it. For this, and as you said, that's why we cannot let them wear this kind of uh, of suits. How many how many people did you have volunteering and working over the two days, roughly? Well, roughly is about three hundred people. Yes, because we have the volunteers, we have of course the staff, but we also have the people that is covering the the like uh, the authorities that have been here for a long time, they have to bring the, la, uh, the nine, uh, the Naval, which is the Marines, you know, we have the well, so many, uh, so many people just working. This is about 250 to 300 people for sure. And of the 998 people that started the swim, how many completed the full 10K? Well, it's uh, the other way, actually, is 10% of the people just uh, leave the, the events. Uh, but, you know, it's funny because someone would think that uh, the 10K is the hardest one. But no, I think the, the one that we have more uh, more difficulties is the 1.9. Why? Because, as you know, <laughs> so many people that start with this, they think it's so easy. And uh, in fact, when we started and we talked to the people in this case, which we have to switch a bit the course, I told them, it's going to be against the current. It's going to be really tough. That's something that we you, we swim swim mostly of the time, well, most, all the time. And we were like, this is going to be crazy for you guys. And uh, I guess for the 1.9, we have about 20% people that just didn't finish. 3.9, we had about 15% to 10 to 15. And the 10K, we have a 10%. It's usually so, like that every year. So where do the 100 people go in the marathon? Do they go well, on the boat? Do they swim to the beach? What happens to them? Or do, do, do we don't know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's good that we know. Us. But uh, as you saw, that we have this race next to the shore. So if you have the Saturday swim, you can go to the shore. You can jump into this, to these uh, wave runners or the boats. And they can bring you back to the shore, which is really close. It's about 150 meters away. So it's easy in that way. But uh, the 10K is different. 
the 10K, we that's why we have about 50, 40 to 50 uh, these small boats because we have the middle ones, which are for like uh, 30 to 50 people. And then we have the huge ones, the big ones, which are for two, 250 to 450 people. So that's uh, something important because they know that at any point they can just jump into the into these uh, boats and just that's it that's the end of the race but uh, they cannot go back to the to the beach that's uh, that's a fact i mean if you are like a 3 to 4 kilometers away you know and it's crazy you just have to put your hand up and just someone is coming to to rescue that's what happened with that 10%, 10%. when we when we arrived in cancun there was um, there was a bit of a wind i think is the best way to describe it and and the bit of wind was in the direction from the island into shore, and the yeah. the experienced uh, Hall of Fame marathoners were all having drinks by the pool and saying to ourselves, you know, <laughs> if he runs his race into the wind, there's going to be about six of us out of a thousand that are going to finish this, and we're not <laughs> going to be very happy. We're going to be throwing up the whole way. It's going to take us forever. Uh, another beer, please. Um, and uh, you were uh, you were very uh, very fortunate, very well planned to have an alternative course, which actually was two loops. And I know a number of swimmers uh, just decided ahead of time they were only going to do five, so they swam back to the start or the finish, which was the same spot, with the yes. chip, crossed the thing, so you so you knew who they were. Um, was that the first time you've had to run that that loop course, or has it happened every few years? Uh, that's uh, actually an important question because, uh, you know, uh, we have different kinds of uh, directions in the wind somehow. We have the north ones, we have the south ones. Depends on how it's going to treat us these, day, these days. So in this case, for, for example, a few years ago, we had the same thing, but we had to, to have the event in Isla Mujeres because the wind was the other way around. So we need the, the island to cover that um, that course. In this case, it helped us, but um, it's the first time that we have to make like this hybrid, you know, between some different routes and uh, understand first the wind, second, the current, and third, which is one important thing, is that we need to have most of the boats that come from, remember that Cancun is, is so touristic and everything is open for uh, every boat that comes around. So we need to notify all these boats uh, through the authorities that they cannot go into inside this this cupboard or this security line you know so it's it's a lot to work here so we had to work on this route extremely to be a part of this security in cancun where no one can go through and secondly where the the wind is helping and the current is helping also to the swimmers so yes it was the first time we have to do this but we thought it was the best idea because we have swum this. We understand the weather here. We understand the currents. We understand how this uh, the traffic goes. Uh, and we have to switch it depending on how it's going to treat us the weather. So I have to, that's I a have, good thing. I have to say I was impressed because I've done the circular courses before. And um, you, you tend to, um, you, don't get it, you don't get a benefit of a current, mostly in a, in a circular course. This time, I looked at my time after 10K, and I went, yeah, I think I think there was a current pushing us on the outside. And then yeah. as we came along the beach, I think there wasn't a current hurting us. So for a, an <laughs> old guy, I thought this was just, it was like swimming down a river. That was fantastic. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what we thought. You know, we, we have to think also on the way that you don't get really tired. You know, and if you're really tired on the way back, it's better to have been tired against the current because you just just can jump into the into the beach. You can just go and leave. And that's it. Yeah. If you're going against the current when you're like a two kilometers away from the beach, it's gonna be crazy. You know, so we have to think about everything, everything about that. We need to understand how many boats you need to have in that part of the ocean and how many you need to have on the main point. Do you remember there is one main point where you have to go back. And that main point is where you cross. Everyone is there, so we need to understand that in that in that moment we need to have like a most of our kayaks and paddle boarding helping the people just to bring them either back to the course or just take them out to the to the to the beach. 
So it's a it's something that be it's been working for a while, but we have to actually work in every year is different. So um, as you as you saw, uh, we have a great team. We have a great uh, people working in this event, and thank God that for so many years they understand the security of this event, and that's how we try to to have the best the best uh, results. So we had a, a number of our honorees who went on tours of um, the Mayan civilization and had a, had a great experience. Um, I saw at the start there were um, there were uh, people dressed in in in, in, in Mayan traditional uh, costumes and and there was there was a smoke ceremony and certainly when our ceremony was done I I couldn't help but notice there were four or five women in in bikinis dancing on a pedestal out in front of the discotheque. Yeah. I'm not sure how, how much that was the Mayan tradition, but tell us about the history of Cancun and, and the Mayan influence. Well, as you saw, actually, we're surrounded of this. So every day we have to live, live with this, with these people, which is really, really amazing. We love that and that we want everyone that comes here to Cancun and to this part of uh, Mexico to live that. The, we we have to transmit tra transmit this that that this, the splendor of the the fourth and the fifth centuries before it is the I mean it's so huge so beautiful we have the chaman we have the people that just have this um, the smoke you know where you cross uh, thro through this you have the drums so we want to transmit this to the people that, that comes here and swim in fact there's something important as you saw i don't know if you realized but the, this, this chaman the guide was speaking in mayan and uh well he was trying to of course well i don't speak mayan though but i i know what i think that's what he was saying though know, <laughs> is that he's trying to uh, <laughs> to ask for this permit, you know, for us to jump into the water and to swim across the the reefs and get to the other island. So it's just something, is, of course, a show somehow, but in the other way is something that, that we want to, to bring to all the people that comes from 30. It was 34 countries that came here, 34 this year. It was huge, though. And we call the whole Mexico in the total capacity of the states. So um, it was kind of uh, beautiful to have people from Kazakhstan, for example, from Russia, from uh, United States, States, Canada, of course. Uh, London, as you know, for sure, we have the, the best swimmer here from London. And um, all that we have to, to present it as the way that we want is through these traditions, which is the Mayans. And that's something that has given us uh, a lot of opportunities to promote the event with many people that comes from either places, like, uh, as I said, Europe or either Guatemala, which, as you know, we, we, we also uh, share that kind of a traditions, but they love to come here also to have this uh, information. So, yeah, we try to, to bring all this to the swimmers, and I think they enjoy it. So um, I've, I've been to a lot of events, and many of the events now give out finishers medals. Um, but um, in Cancun, the finisher medals were big. They were heavy. <laughs> and there were, between the three races, there were at least a 1,000 people walking around with 1.9, 3.8, or 10K finisher medals. So it, uh, to, to be in, in Cancun that uh, the evening without a medal around your neck, you, you had to be a, you had to be working the race on a boat or something because everybody had a medal. <laughs> yes, actually, as you saw, our main goal um, is for them to have this medal. I mean, it's it's such a so so many months for you to swim because to cross from one island to another island is crazy. I mean, it's not like a circuit in this game. In this in this way, this time uh, happened like that. But uh, it's usually, as you know, it's from one point to another. And um, training for that is not easy. So for me, in this case, for me, Rafa, is the most important. When you cross that line and you go like, you have your medal. Come on, man. I mean, you swam 10K from one island to another island. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It doesn't matter. Is That's what I love about this event. And that's why we let them swim with fins. Uh, either if you want to take them out, you just want to keep them swimming with those. Doesn't matter, but you end up at the other at the other end of the of the of the island, and that's amazing. That's how you get this finished medal. So yeah, for me, it's really important that you know. 
So you you also had uh, age group winners every uh, every five years up to sixty five. Um, I have to I have to say that uh, Michael uh, Reed MBE, um, uh, the king of the English Channel was I uh, sorry the king of the Channel was uh, was swimming at age eighty two. Rafa, yeah. when are you going to add seventy seventy five eighty <laughs> eighty five? Where you, did you have many swimmers over seventy? Uh, yes, actually, you know, of course. He was the oldest one. He was uh, it was amazing to meet him. It was amazing to talk to him. He was, was I was like, what man? 82 is just like crazy, man. But you know, behind him, the oldest one was 73 years old. So it was 73, and then he was, but there was this girl called um Enriqueta, you know Jaime Enriqueta Nunez, of course. Enriqueta Enriqueta's Mexican swimmer, he's been swimmer for so many years, and she's 73 years old. So yeah. Michael is just like, you know, it's out of the, out of the question, you know. So as you said, we were thinking about it, but you know, we had about 34 swimmers. Let me check on that. But I guess we had about um a we have about 34 swimmers over the 70 years old. Wow. So that goes like a new category for us. And just think about think about that and uh we need to have that medal for those swimmers because they deserve that for sure. And, and I think as, as you get older and, and I, I'm not as old as Jaime, um, but I mean, you're, you're not winning overall anymore. You you were 50 to 55 group winner this year. Yes. I, I, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I was going to say also that he was uh, Michael 82 and he was 10 K of course. Yes. And um, behind him in the, he was another swimming, which was 72, yes, as I said, from Canada. And he was the 10K. In between those, we had two more swimmers, which were 20, uh, 74, 76, but they swam the iron the iron swim, which is 3.9, you know? So the difference between Michael and this important swimmer from, from Canada is 11 years. I mean, 10K, you know, it's... it's Man, when you, Michael. When, is... If you go to the World Masters and look at the videos, all the videos are about the hundred-year-old woman doing butterfly. Wow. The the world loves swimmers uh, as they get older. They keep doing amazing things. So, Amy, you you have a few more years to get there, but trust me, it it you That's know, right. you blink your eyes twice, and, and you will be you will be seventy five. You're looking I'll for your there. medal. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. But I mean, Michael is just like, oh, man, it's, it's such an example for us. And thank you for asking about that, because we I think they deserve that medal. Of course, we have to open that category, I guess. Uh, we, but I don't know until what, like uh, 80 to I don't know what's your suggestion until what year five, do we have five, to I don't five, know. five years. Keep going. Keep going. All the way to what? Age? All, all the way to the, the last one that finishes. Okay, amazing. I'll do that for sure. I mean, because they deserve that, you know. I mean, totally yeah. agree with you. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. write that down. They are pure, pure inspiration for for all yeah. of us. Are, are yes. you aware, yes. Rafa, of any marathons with more competitors than El Cuche? No, to tell you the truth, no. Uh, we had uh, these uh, people coming from Brazil uh, two years ago with uh, Swim uh, Channel. I don't know if you heard of them. Swim Channel is a huge event. They were they they have been around, and they told me that you know Rafa, you know that this is the largest event. I mean, you know, I was like, no, to tell you the truth, no, I didn't know that, you know. And it's so great to know about that, but this is a lot of responsibility too because <laughs> that that comes with uh, as the Spider Man says, you know. But in a way, we need to understand that um, we also need to understand the, cap cap the the capacity of boats that we have in Cancun to cover all that kind of that many people, you know. That's why this year, this coming up new year, we're going to bring down to, to 800 swimmers, only 800, even though it's a lot of swimmers, you know, only for the 10K. I'm going to have about, um, it was uh, about uh, 1,400 in total with the other two races so uh i guess we want to have to bring down the, the quantity because of the capacity of boats that we have but yes it's a lot of swimmers you saw that thousand swimmers is crazy 
How how important is the event to the Cancun government calendar? Um, it's starting to because they saw already how many people comes. They knew about the, the Hall of Fame. Of course, that's something very important for us. It was very important for them. So starting from this year, they they saw the the how important it is for the people to come here and enjoy these kind of sports, you know. So finally, I think to you guys also, is that they start, they, they saw Del Cruce, and I guess for the next year, we're going to have more of the government involved. So thank I, you again for you guys. I, I know um, some of the English Channel people a couple of years ago did an analysis for Dover, and they said, okay, we have, 250 solo swimmers and they each have their crew and we had 150 relays and they had their crew and their families and their people and they took the hotel rooms and they bought their lunches and their dinners and they came up with this incredible number I think 20 million dollars of, of boost to the local economy so I would encourage you to do something like that for your for your event and share that with the government and and the other thing you can say to them is, look, the you know, the the stag parties are nice. The ladies coming down for their friends getting married, they're nice. Uh, but there's a lot of drinking culture for your swimmers. Most of them came. They they had a few drinks, but they were very responsible because they had an event to come. They took the hotel rooms, they had the local transportation. They are good tourists. No trouble. Yes. Yes, and, and you know, as you saw also, it's just not the swimmer. It just comes with the families. We have a, like some, if we have like 1,500 people, let's say swimmers, we had a, about 3,000, over 3,000 people. And that's what they saw. They realized that there's a lot of people coming here for this event. And during this low season, that's something really important. We have this event through the low season in Cancun because it's better for us and better for ah. them. So you know what I mean? We usually have this event at the end of June. Um, I mean, at the end of, of May, because we have the Marine Day. The 1st of June, we have the Marine Day here. And we usually have this event for them. So then uh, we have the Nationals, which is uh, the Nationals High Mesa around the sec third week uh, weekend of uh, May, right? Yeah, it, it, it usually gets a, a week before or after. So that's the, the, the Cruce. Yeah, so, yeah, and we can, usually yeah. have it in that's like a, yeah, we are yeah, very close, there. very close. Yep. Yes, exactly. So we had overlap with that. So we have to move it uh, before, you know, this uh, these events, and uh, it was good though because we also had uh, it was mem mem Memorial Weekend also the last weekend of uh, May. So we were thinking which is the best season. So we have to move it um, before like uh, the second weekend because of the low season because there's a lot of more expectations about of, of course the weather was is supposed to be better you have no idea but right now we've been like uh for 15 days raining uh there's maybe a hurricane coming actually so it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy the weather here sometimes later after june you know so uh yeah the the local um People is just looking at us, just thinking about next year. And as you said, the boost local economy is, is, is very important for them. So, Raf, I'm going to wrap up the interview. I, I want to thank you again for hosting the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. The, the swim was really interesting for me. Uh, the other thing that I will say to people is the quality of the sand in Cancun was unbelievable. <laughs> it, was, it was almost like silk on my feet. And the sun was nice, but it didn't burn me. So we, uh, we, we spent a lot of time hanging around in the pool, chatting with our friends. Um, and it was just, it was a fantastic long weekend we had. And I'd encourage anybody, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, you get down to Cancun in, in April, May, uh, before your, your season has started, knock that 10K off, swim in the biggest, biggest marathon that I think exists in the world. It, it was a really good experience, Rafa. So, so thank you again. No, thank you. Really, thank you. Thank you so much because I think uh, this event is growing so much and with you guys, it's just better. And uh, so many great swimmers came to this event and came for this season. And I hope to see you again. 
I'll see you again this and the next years. Of course, we're going to have a lot of surprises coming up. Okay. Uh, for everybody watching this video, um, we also have another 100 videos on the Imshoff YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe or please look at them. So thanks, guys.